echoes. Um, but we're gonna try this one more time. I've turned off all the devices. Here we go. Good morning. Good morning. This is New Life Church of Faith Sunday School. Today is Sunday, October the 17th. Come on in, come on in. Good morning, good morning. Good morning to our Facebook and Zoom brethren. Welcome to New Life Church of Faith Sunday School session in Champaign and in Danville, Illinois. We bring you greetings from our pastor, Thomas Miller, and our first lady, Sister Beverly Miller. Today's lesson, we will continue in the series of teaching on the awakening to a new normal. Today, our very own minister, Christine Cooper, will bring the subject, Walking in the Light. We welcome you to participate in our lesson by writing your questions in the chat box, either on Zoom or in the Facebook chat box. Without further delay, let us begin our session with Minister Christine Cooper. Okay, you got to unmute. Minister. Okay, I thought that. <laughs> Amen. God bless everybody on today. What a privilege and an honor just to be in your presence to teach this word of the Lord. So as we begin, we're going to have a word of prayer and then we're going to go straight into the lesson. So Father God, we thank you. We thank you, God, that it is you that have woke us up on today. And we give you praise and we give you glory for that, God. Thank you for another opportunity to just do your will, Father God. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we just come against every interference right now over technology, God, that we will be able to go forth, Father God, and to begin to teach this lesson, God, that there would be no interruptions, Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God. Stir up the minds of those, Father God, that you have called to tune in, Father God. Let there be no distractions right now, in the name of Jesus, Father God, that you, God, would get the glory, Father God. Anoint this word, God. Use this vessel for your glory, Father God, that you would be glorified, that the wisdom and the knowledge of your word would come forth without hindrance, Father God, that it would fall on the good grounds of our heart right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, that you would get the glory, that it would cause forth direction and guidance and illuminate the path of our decision, Father God, that truly we would be the reflection of you, Father God, as we sit and sup with you, we thank you that we are hungry and that we are thirsting, God. And you said in your word that we shall be filled if we hunger after it, Father God. Father God, just prepare the ground right now in the name of Jesus through your word. Now, God, we just give you all the praise and all the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What a privilege. I am so ready. Hallelujah. So let's go to the first side. Like we say, let's go to work. Hallelujah. So my topic is living in the light and walking like we are of Christ, being the reflection of Christ himself. That's how we ought to walk each and every day. And as we go down this lesson, beloved, we're going to go through some principles of what hinders us in our carnality, within our flesh. And we want to look at the reasons of why we should move forward in the things of God. So our foundational scripture is for, for you were once dark, for you were once darkened. Ugh, can't even, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness righteousness and truth finding out what is acceptable to the lord i love that scripture because we were once walking in darkness now we're to walk in light we're to walk after the spirit of god just as jesus walked after the spirit of god he was led of the spirit we are born again now we're no longer in darkness 
the word of God shows us light. We have a new heart. Now we want to walk in the light of God. We want to walk as Christ walked. It is so possible. And it is a fact that the same things that Jesus did that we can do. Like the, in Philippians 4 and 13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So there is no excuse for us to not be able to walk in everything that God has told us to walk in. If we listen and obey in all our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He will guide you when in all of our ways, like after I prepared the lesson and I was laying in the bed and I, I'm, I have, I'm a punctual person. I'm very punctual. So when I was laying there today, the Lord said, do not get up until eight o'clock. He said, don't you dare get up to eight. There is more than enough time for you to get ready. There's more than enough time. I need you to be rested. I need your body to rest. I turned over at quarter after seven, but I'm not going to get up, Lord. I'm going to yield to your will. And God said, and every time I say, oh, Lord, I want to say no rest. In all our ways, when we acknowledge him, he directs the path. God is concerned about the wholeness of us. Because if I would have got up early, I would have been anxious. I would have been frantic. And God said, be anxious for nothing. But all things give thanks and give prayer unto him. That was the word that we taught on Monday on Facebook. So God is teaching us how. Then in everything that we do, we are to yield to him. And as we yield to him and to know that he is present in everything that we do, that we can walk in him in every aspect of our day. That's the type of relationship that God wants from us so that then we can begin to walk in the fullness of God. Even on today, don't get distracted because it's darker where I'm sitting. Next week, I'll change the light. The enemy will use so many things for you to be distracted so you will not get what God needs for you to get so that we can walk in the light and be his hands and be his mouth and be be what he has called for us to be amen so let's go to the next slide beloved hallelujah to god and to him alone be the glory this is the great commission this is what jesus told his disciples when he went back up on high then jesus said this is matthew beloved chapter 28 verses 18 and 20 and it reads then jesus came to them and said all the Authority in heaven and on earth, I have given, it has been given to me. Therefore, which means here is the here is God, Jesus, giving us the same authority. He's letting us know I have all authority. Now, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And when we hear baptizing them, we simply want to say, well, that's the pastor's job. That's the pastor's job. But no, God has called us to baptize. It's water. It's water. It represents the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. Baptizing them. When they baptized, when John the Baptist came, he was in the river baptizing everyone. Now, God has caused us to baptize. You see nowhere in there where it says pastors only baptize. He tells us this is part of this commission that we are to walk in. If we, if you were walking down, walking with someone in Kickapoo Park and you were sharing them about the gospel and you said you need to be baptized and they said, I ain't been baptized and the Holy Spirit quickens you and say, go to the water, baptize them. You in our own carnality of flesh would instantly say, no, you got to get to a church building. But the word of God tells us, baptize them baptize them in the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit. That's what we are called to do as children of the light, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Then he said, and to teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always 
to the very end of the earth. This is the commission that God gave his followers. He gave to his followers. And as Jesus was in the garden and he prayed, he said, Father, I pray for those who are with me. I have not lost none except for Judas. But yet he said, God, and he was in that garden. He said, Father, I pray for those who will believe on the words that they will teach. The disciples have fulfilled the commission and the word has been translated and it's been sent to us. Now we're to take this gospel and we're to begin to begin to share it with the world just as the disciples did just probably as maybe your mother did or your grandmother did they shared this gospel we're to share the gospel of christ that's why we're going to spend in this lesson looking at reasons <clears throat> And I need you to know this, beloved, looking at reasons that are we sitting to question within our flesh, not your spirit within your flesh. We want to die to our flesh and live unto Christ because you are a spiritual being. But if we won't bring light to the issues that we're struggling with in our flesh, we want to be delivered. We want to be set free from these excuses of the enemy to say that we cannot do what God has called for us to do, what he has anointed us to do through him. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me every day. Minister Dan and Minister Charlene, as we stand before you, pouring out the, the richness of the word of God, trust me. We're still under attack. Trust me. We're still pushing forward. Trust me. We're still doing it. I hear the voice. Oh, that's easy for you. You know why it's easy for you? Because easy for us, because we trust in the word that says his yoke is easy. His burdens is light. That's what God has told us. And we believe in that. And you must believe in that. But there is nothing that you're not yoked up to with God that it is impossible for you to do. God has called for you to do it. I heard this statement, and I love it. It says, the will of God will never take you to, never take you to, I got to find it because it's on my phone, never take you to where the grace of God cannot, cannot, where the grace of God will not protect you. The will of God will never take you to a place or never instruct you to do a thing for God where the grace of God will not protect you. It's his grace that covers you. It's his grace that comes on when the spirits of insecurity try to raise their head up and say, I cannot do it, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. His yoke is easy. His burdens are light. We can accomplish it because we live according to the word of God and the will of God not leading to our own understanding but in all our ways acknowledging him and he shall direct this path in everything when I was getting dressed this morning and I was looking for my shoes and I was in the closet and I was digging through the shoe barrel and I found one shoe my closet is messy I threw the shoe over to the side I stuffed all the other things in the closet I didn't find the shoe on the floor and then I stood there and I said, God, do I got to take it all out again to find the shoe? He said, yes. I took it all out again. I pulled the barrel out. I didn't see it. I'm putting things back. And I said, God, where the shoe? And my eye saw the shoe. It's in the side of the barrel. Thank you, Jesus. He's that much concerned about everything in our life that he cared enough about the shoe that I wanted to wear. Now, if he cares that much about a shoe, he cares more about a person than a shoe. He cares more about you. Like we say, we care more about the birds, even though the birds see what did God say? The birds. They sow not, they reap not, but God is so much intently involved in feeding a bird. He said, how much valuable are you? See, when we realize that God's got us, then there's no limits to what God wants to do through us. Amen. Let's go to the next slide, beloved. Hallelujah. I just had to say this, Minister <laughs> I think sometimes when we bring this out in our Bible studies that we understand yes. how intimate, you know, it is with us and God, that yes. even in that circumstance that could just 
just be so frustrating that he would be there to guide us, even yeah. in that. And how beautiful it is. You know, he's our parent. And as parents, we yeah. see the ins and outs of our children and we're yeah. able to help them. So I'm glad you brought. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. I, I just had to say that. It is. He loves us so much. And when we begin to just, what we call marinate in that love of him, then we go out and we do the things for him because we're touching that love. We're experiencing that love. So we're going to look at some difference between faith and fear. And then, beloveds, we're going to go into some different illustrations because we want to expose the enemy, expose him. And what I mean by that, beloved, is when he begins to try to speak, when he begins, you know, it's like my son Terry is, is back in my home. He's living with me. And his commitment is to go to church every Sunday. And my husband is in the kitchen. He say, hey, is Terry going to church? I said, well, honey, you know the conditions that we made. And I left it at that. And then the Lord said, he said that because he wants you to deal with that. But he is the head of the household and he is to deal with that. So I said, thank you, Jesus. Now, in my flesh, I would have responded with, you know what he said. You know what we said when he moved there. The whole attitude is different. But God is teaching me my positioning and my place within my marriage and to allow my mouth to speak only sweet things, to keep that bit in that mouth. So when we look at the faith of God or walking in this commission that God has called us to, we look God because number one, God commanded us to do it. It's a commandment. It's a commandment. It's not a commandment that says pastor, teachers, evangelists, prophets. It doesn't say that. It's because he commanded each and every one of us that. He has given each and every one of us the ministry of reconciliation to bring people back to Christ. Every one of us. So we're without excuse because he has called us to do it. To win souls for the kingdom because it's a battle over the souls. And God wins. But when it's a battle over the souls to show people who they really, really were created to be. It's what they were created to be. And that's what, and this is something in my spirit right now, the Lord is saying, and this is a question I'm just dropping in there. Have you ever had a loved one pass from this world? And I'm just going to keep it real. And their life was not living the way we know they should live. And trust me, beloveds, we don't have no heaven and we don't have no hell and we don't know what happens in the end. We've not, but we are food inspectors. And we know they lived their life ruthless and recklessness and then they died and we know they didn't commit to God at the moment that we was there. We know they didn't. So let's not be ignorant. We know they went to hell and we was probably unsure. What They grieved me so much. That hurt me so much. That I missed it. We need to, we're not to want, we're not to have people die. They do die and go to hell. But this commission that God has given us to give them an opportunity for Christ. And I'm not saying that they didn't because I don't believe not a person in this world ever went to hell without an opportunity that God had given them. Not a one. But the thing is, have we done what God has told us all to do concerning the soul of that person is to show the love of God why Jesus died with his great compassion that he showed us and how he's forgiven us. That's how we ought to be. Those are, these are the things that should motivate us. These are the things that want to make us speak this word. These are the things when we look at it, we don't want God has no delight in the wicked perishing. Not a one. What about fears? I'm intimidated by our age. I'm too young or I'm too old. There's, those are things that we get. I'm too old now. God is no respecter of person. He uses everybody where they are right now. Today is your day. He said, not knowing the right thing to answer. These are the things that we, we struggle against at times. Because we say, I don't know the right answer. I can't talk like this person or I can't speak like this person. That's no excuse. Fear of being rejected or loss of a relationship of others. I'd rather lose a relationship 
instead of not saying what the Lord is telling me to say. That they ridiculed Jesus, they talked about Jesus, they crucified Jesus, they spit on Jesus. Well, let's gird up with that belt of truth and just know these are the oppositions we're going to face. He said, count it all joy. He said, count it all joy. That's how we ought to be with Christ, sharing this gospel, already knowing we allow those insecurities to not let us say nothing. When the compassion and the love of God and the people who used to speak to us when we were in sin, they stood against that. Even though we didn't want to hear it, they still ministered to us because our soul was valued because the spirit of God that was in them was compelling them to care about our eternity. You don't want to come across as preachy or judgmental. Well, guess what? You are the light of the world and you cannot be hid in darkness. Your very presence convicts because the spirit of God is on you. You know, have you ever had somebody, I want to talk to you. And like, what's wrong with me? It's the conviction of God that is on you. So I already know God has anointed you and called you and set you apart for this ministry. Every child of God. Feeling as if you're not living up to what the word says. That spirit of condemnation. That's one of the biggest things that the enemy tries to bombard you within your mind. Because God said, cast down every imagination of things that the enemy is whispering. None of us can live up to everything that the word says. Because we're a witness because of our flesh. And we all fall down. God said our best righteousness is still a filthy ray. So settle it with yourself. It's only because of his grace. See, that's how you come in. And that's how you draw people to the kingdom. You say it's because of his grace. It's because of his grace. It's because of what he's done. That way we can identify with others. Our personal insecurities within ourselves. The things that went in ourselves, Lord, I don't talk right, I don't speak right, I don't smell right. I mean, Minister O'Dad, especially, she can tell this lesson is, she, I mean, it's leaps and bounds for me to put it together. And at times I think, I can't do this. And she was so kind, and, and she typed everything out, and she thought she was teaching me. She was teaching me how to teach you can do it. And she was teaching me, see, it's just not for the world. It's for the church. It's just for the body. We need each other. Oh, God, we need each other so much to encourage. And she encouraged me, and I did, I did, I did. I was sitting in my bed and saying, Lord, I don't know. Lord, I don't know. But God said, I'm going to show you how. And I completed it. And I thank God for that because I completed it. And I was so grateful. It was him. So we're not just here to share this, com this great commission to the world. We're here to share it with the body and to encourage, encourage each other. To fellowship with the God. I cry out for the church. Come back to church. Come back so we can fellowship with each other. So we can be with each other. So I can see your face. So I can love on you. Because your presence matters. I need to see you. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next slide. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, he's so good. Yes. Says we need to go over this slide. <laughs> we didn't do this <laughs> you still stuck <laughs> as long <laughs> oh Jesus <Not> just... <laughs> I'm so happy in the Lord where do we want to go over minister of that okay so in, in this slide when you know you, you gave us all illustrations of walking in the light and I think you were kind of giving us a comparison of yeah faith versus fear but yeah the holy spirit kind of took over and <laughs> you poured out your heart oh god <laughs> so praise the lord so i thank god i do it's like because the fear of that insecure personal issue were the things that keep us frozen and to keep us in a place where because okay just keep it real i don't spell well and because of that insecurity and because, put it like this, because it has become an insecurity because it is a truth. But I don't accept the truth of what it is because I can do all things through Christ's strength in me. Because he has designed every area. 
He has equipped everything. He's given me everything to complete the task. So I don't lean to the, the, the fact of the insecurity that the enemy tries to keep me paralyzed in. Mm -hmm. move towards faith that says I can do all things to Christ. So what do I got? I got spell checks. So if I spell it wrong, guess what? Spell checks there. So spell checks go to God. Hallelujah. I use everything that every thing that is capable we're living in such a time of technology that we have so many resources beloved that you can do it so there's no limits because god has removed their excuses see the people oh, they didn't have all that but we got all that like pastors say we're born in this time for a specific purpose to fulfill the will of god so to give him the glory so we need to lay aside every weight that so easily beset us lay it down and stand up to what god has called for you to do we are living examples before you each and every sunday we are women of god mighty women of god humble we have grown through being accountable to you and accountable to one another i just pray today that you will get you an accountability partner an accountability partner, someone that will hold you accountable. It's so important. These are the weapons of your warfare. These are them. Use that. Amen. Let's go to the next slide. Are there any comments or questions, Minister Charlene? Hallelujah. So let's. Um, we do have a comment from Deacon, um, Deacon Wiley. She said, Minister Christine Cooper, you're awakening our spirit to move towards our inner light of Jesus, being transparent. Hallelujah. Amen. Lay it down and stand. Amen. Amen. So one of the things that we brought out, beloveds, was our age. And the reason God brought this out, because we're going to look at people at different ages or different situations. We're bringing them out to encourage you to lay it aside. So we look at Jesus as 12 years old, and it says, Luke chapter 2, beloved, verses 41 to 50. His parents went to Jerusalem every year for the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the customs of the feast. And when he had finished the day, as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. I just got to stop right there and just, because... You know, I remember, beloved, the time where I would not read scripture in front of other people because the reading issue and the spelling issues and the insecurities and I wouldn't do it. I just wouldn't do it. When I would when I would go to classes and be around other people or in a group, I would go to the bathroom because it's that insecurity of, of messing up, of saying the wrong word, or what's that word? Or, that, in, that, that, that stronghold, that insecurity kept me down. And as I'm reading today, the Lord is bringing that out. I'm like, look at God, though. Look at God. That insecurity. But look at God. He can bring you out of those things. That's why he's pulling you so much in those areas. Because that's where he gets the greater glory. It's in your weakness. It's the weakness of you that God uses. It's the weakness. It's his strength me perfect. It's that weakness. Hallelujah. So Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother did not know it. They supposed that he had been with the company, that he had been in the company. They went a day's journey and they sought him among their relatives and acquaintance. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Imagine the franticness of these parents. Now, so it was that after three days, they found, took them three days to find Jesus. Amen. To found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. And so when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? Look, 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 your father and I have sought you, sought you and you're anxious, you anxiously. 
Next slide, beloved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And he said to them, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement in which he spoke. This is how we should be. We see Jesus 12 years old in the temple learning about his father. So God tells us when we have these little babies, these, these little young kids within our sanctuary who loves God. I think about Ethan and Benjamin. We had two young boys in our church, and, and I know there's others, but I love me some Ethan and Benjamin. They're, they're mimers. They dance in our mime group, but these two little boys, they love God. They're young. They love God. I don't even know how old they are, five or six or seven. They're very little, but they love God. They love God. I wish you could hear Benjamin pray. He articulates so well and when he opens his mouth this little boy and he prays you can feel the anointing and the compassion within his prayer and he's young he's young he's in love with God he's sharing his faith he talks about God so we must not give excuse for our age because he loves God. Ethan tells everyone, I'm going to be a pastor. And he means that thing. He got baptized. Our, our shepherd said, he came to him and said, I need to be baptized. Because I need to preach this gospel. He's young. So that gets away the excuses. Because when we're young, there's no excuses. But I'm speaking to the spirit. Let's stop giving excuses to our flesh and our age. And let's move forth in the spirit of God. Because when we first fell in love with Jesus, when we were first accepting him as our Lord and our Savior, we were on fire for God. There was nothing anybody could tell us about Jesus. He was so much to us. We want to tell everybody. We're the first ones at the church. We're the first ones at Bible study. We're the first ones that want to worship. We're jumping up and down. We're so excited about Jesus. Let's come back to this first love. Let's get back to this race. Well, all we want to do is to be with him. Recognize your distraction. One of my distractions were video games. And God said, delete every single one off of your phone. Get rid of them. Because they're the distraction. That's what that's just pulling you away. Jesus told his parents, why would you seek me? Why would you worry? Don't you know? Don't you, did you read my book? Didn't you, didn't you know what type of person I was? Didn't you know I would be about my father's business? Why are you confused? Why are you worried? People should be able to read us like that. Read us like that. I love Minister Latoya and the ministry that she spoke. She said, can't nobody say nothing against my mother and my sister because I know them. I've read their books. We're family and we need to fellowship with one another so that we can know and identify with each other. More fellowship. Amen. Hallelujah. Next slide. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, uh, this is a found, this is what we want to, I want to, the Lord wants to make sure that you do not, you did not choose me, but I have chosen you. So when you were talking about doing the things of God, take that to mind. You didn't, God chose you. You didn't choose him. He chose you. He selected you. He knows everything about you. Every insecurity, every great victory, everything. He knows your tomorrow. He knows your yesterday. He knows how you're going to end the race. He chose you. He selected you to do what he has called you to do. You are the one that needs to do it. He's chosen you. You're specifically designed to do it. So let's get rid of, Lord, seriously? Me? But when I look at Samuel, and I look at him, and as I read about Samuel, I love the fact that Samuel's mom, Hannah, she was barren. And she made a vow unto God, 
that she would dedicate her son to that to God for the rest of his life if he gave her a baby. Now he had no choice. He had no say in it. His mother went before the Lord before he was ever conceived in a womb. So before we were ever conceived in our mother's womb, God has already selected us. He said before the foundation of the world, before you came forth out of your mother's womb, I assigned you, I predestinated you, I called you. Before you came forth, look at Samuel. And she gave birth to this child. And then she brought him to Eli, the house of God. And as I was researching, beautiful Obed, she loves, she knows in particular. I couldn't figure out his age exactly when she brought him between three and five years old when he lived in the temple with the priest. Can you imagine taking your child and living in the temple? It was just enough for her to just to have the pleasure of bringing forth a child from her own womb. That was enough. She she said, Lord, let me experience this. How many promissory notes have we made to God? How many times have we laid before him and we said, God, if you do this, I'll do it, God. God, if you save me from this, I'll do it, God. God, if you make, get me out of this, I'll do it, God. I'll serve you, God. How many promissory notes have we made that we have not fulfilled? I'm married and I told God, I said, I can't say, don't share it all. So I, I said, I really, 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 really be transparent. Because that's a promissory note I made when I was in my sin. I said, if you ever get me, if I ever go and get on your side, God, then I'll share it all, God. If you ever get me, if I ever, if I ever come around to serve you, listen to the arrogance of the pride of me. But look at the love and the compassion of God that he still came and he still wanted me with the arrogance and with that pride. And all I could do is say thank you because I could have died in that. I could have died in that sin. But his love, his love, he said, I still got work for you to do. I know she's stubborn. I know she's blind. I know she's hard headed, but she's mine. She's mine. I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it because I know. I know one thing about her. She's got to change. She's got to open her mouth. That's the thing that I know that she's going to do. That's the one thing I know that that girl's going to do. And I say thank you all glory to them because I owe them so much more. I hear Jesus is 11 years old. They hear. Yeah, Samuel is 11 and he begins to hear the voice of the Lord. And he begins to hear about Eli's sons and the corruption that they were doing. And God exposed it to this 11 year old boy. And then he, had, then he went in before, <laughs> before Eli and he said, Don't you hold it back to me. Or be worse than you. And this 11 year old boy had to tell him about the destruction that his sons was bringing on the land and how they would die. And he had to speak the prophetic word of God. What prophetic word has been stirred up in you? What is the prophetic calling that God has told you that you're not saying? And what is it within you? God wants to use you. What are the dreams? What are the revelations? What are those things that God is giving you that you're not sharing? He led his world for 40 years. He anointed Saul King. He anointed David King. And he started at 11. So God has no excuse. But God cannot use you. There is no excuse. Because God has predestinated you before the foundations of the world. Before you ever came out. So let's lay aside. And let's live to this, this spirit of God that's, that roars within us. Let's live to that. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next slide. Hallelujah. Our next example is Jeremiah. I love Jeremiah. Jeremiah was one of the first books God ever gave me was Jeremiah. When he called me into the ministry, he called me to Jeremiah. 
And I was like, whoa, I was like Jeremiah. I had every excuse, God, I can't speak. I'm too young. I ain't been walking with you that long. My sin is before you, God, who am I? But he called Jeremiah in a time that Israel had turned their backs on God and they were serving these pagan gods. They were, they were serving them outside in the courtyard, then going into the temple of God and then trying to glorify God. And they just forgot about them many days and they were just serving Baal and all these other gods. What are the gods that we serve? We see it in the land. These are the cries that is within us. We see and we try to make the world is trying to make it out to be true but it is a lie of the enemy that we have to be the voices of Jeremiah crying out for 20 years while Jerusalem was going to Asher crying out to their sin that's what God has called for us to do to not be afraid of their faces he said my word will be in your mouth it will be in there don't look at people. Stop worrying about them. Speak with God. Says there's a time to say what the Lord say and to not compromise. He preached about the destruction. There's destruction in the land. We have to preach about it. We have to talk about it. There's so much destruction in the land. And with silence. We want to see in silence. We want to go out and to say what the word says. We to go out to the highways and the byways and to bear them in. We to go out and to gather them. We come into the sanctuary to be revealed. We come in and the shepherd gives a fill us and he equips us and he begins to run, chases us and corrects us. And then we rededicate and we get back in the standards that we're supposed to go out. We're supposed to go out, not just with just words, but with our life. We should be found in places arguing with people. We should be found in places doing that. We should be a reflection of him. We should be just as Jesus was. We should be helping, using our gifts, using our talents. We should be helping the lost. We should be helping the hurting. We should give our time. We should be giving our resources. That's what we should be doing. This is the commission. Jeremiah was 17 years old when God called him to speak in a time where all the false prophets were saying blessings and saying how great things were. They were lying on God. It just amazed me how much they lied on him. When Jeremiah put the yoke on him and said, this is the yoke I'm putting on you. And the false prophets came and want to break the yoke. This is what the Lord said. They don't say this is what God says. And it's not what God said. Where are the prophets? Where are the prophets speak what God is saying? We encourage you saying we need to be corrected. We need to be chastened. Speak thy word, Lord, thy servant listens. So we can be loaded, so we can be ready. So we can be ready. Because in the end, God brought him out. And he said, I would not write it on more tablets, but I would write it in your heart. The coming Messiah. Is it in our heart? Is it in our heart to have the hope, to have this love and this compassion that Christ has? That's how we have to be. And cry loud and spare not. I love what my pastor say. If I offend you and it causes you to change, I will never take it back. I will lose you. I will offend you to not do what God has called for me to do. And that's the kind of mind we have to have. I will offend you and lose you. Did the not say what God has called for me to say? Tell me the truth. I don't need fake friends. I don't need people to agree with me. I need someone who's going to be true to me. That's what we need. Realness. Be real. Be real. Be real. Be transparent. Be real. 
That's what we need. Because when we real, because God, God say iron sharpens iron. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Any questions or comments? So I'm excited. We have a comment, we have a comment from yes, um, Deaconess Wiley, Jeremiah 1 5. This is yes, appointed God. and set apart in the womb to teach yes. our children. Yes, set apart. And I'm here today to tell you we all have been set apart. We are set apart so we don't fit in the mold that others fit in in this world. We're bound, we're bound to one another, connected in this great body to strengthen each other. We need each other. That's why I'm pleading and I'm pleading and I'm pleading. Come to church. Come back to church if you're capable. Come. We need each other. Your presence matters. That's where depression and oppression lives. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Amen. Let's go to the next slide. I got a few more minutes. And okay, so now I want to talk about our third person. And this is Timothy. I love Timothy. Timothy was a man. He was called by God. He was mentored by the apostle Paul. Paul loved him some Timothy. Loved some Timothy. And he sent Timothy to churches in, as far as Ephesus, and for they were they had a lot of controversy issues going on within the church. Now imagine God sends you to a church because there's controversy going on in the church. There were things going on in the church that it was issues were going on within the church uh, teachings that were causing division within the church. Timothy was called to address the issues, to put their focus back on Jesus Christ and the resurrected Christ, uh, Jesus and the resurrected Christ in the grace of God. He was encouraged to stir up the gift. And I, I couldn't figure out what the gift was, but the gift of ministry. I believe that Timothy was an excellent speaker. I believe that the power of God came upon this young man with fire and with authority. And he was called by Paul to go in there and to straighten it out. This is the early churches and this is how they moved. God can cause you to go into a place to get it back on track. See, that's what we're called to do. God, he got here. Yeah. The grace of God, he was to encourage by courage to stir up his gift that was in him not to be intimidated by his age. Timothy was not to be intimidated by his age, that he was complete enough to complete the task. Paul, Paul kept telling Timothy, stir up the gift that's within you. Mount yourself up and begin to stir up that gift and speak according to what God has put within you and deal with the issues that are within this church to get them back on track. He's called come his beloved son. He loved Timothy. He knew what he said. When hands were laid on you, boy, I know the cause. Calling that's within you. I know that you're capable of doing it. If Paul had called him to do it, then he was capable enough to do it because Paul was a man who heard from God and Timothy was called and appointed to go forth and to begin to get these churches back in line. Even through people like, who does he think he is? But Timothy mounted his platforms and he straightened them out. He said what God had put within him to get them back on track. Because people can try to come in and cause divisions within the church. Where are the Timothys that will stand up? Where are the words that will say that will rebuke the enemy? We are to protect one another. We're to cover one another. We're to don't let nobody speak ill about your brother or your sister. I remember one time I was having a conversation with Minister Odette and she was sharing some true statements about someone. I love how she made the statement. I'm only stating it as a true statement for the situation, but I'm not stating it as far as a negative fact about the person. We need to learn how to speak the truth in a wisdom that we can speak this truth, that it is a true statement, but spoken not to damage the character of the person. Let me say that again. We need to be able to speak the truth about a situation. 
but not damage the character of the person. That's wisdom. Have you ever been offended? And then you, you deal with the person later. And then the enemy tries to come and say something negative about the person because of the offense. That's when you got to bring that thought into the obedience of Christ and not speak a word. If you cannot say, say what the spirit of God wants you to say concerning the situation, say nothing. Say nothing. Even though, because things can be juicy to our flesh, we still can't say them. Because if it's not to edify and to lift up, then you cannot say it, even if it's an offense. I mean, there's a proper channel to deal with offense. But what God is teaching me, don't say it. Like the situation with my husband, don't go no further with that. Leave it at that. Because when you begin to walk as that, then God can begin to reveal the true intents of the person's heart. Now, that was something new for me because God said, when you begin to listen to me and to be silent and to only say what I want you to say, then I can begin to explain the true intents of the person's heart because you're yielding to me and you will not let nothing come out of your mouth and you humble yourself before me. Then I will begin to explain to you the true intents behind the statement that the person is saying because I want you ignorant concerning nothing. Yielding ourselves to that place. And it's possible every day, all day, all the time. Every day, all day, all the time. Because his yoke is easy and his burdens are light. But he wants us to yield all the time. All day. All the time. As we begin to yield in this concept, we will begin to understand what God is saying. And we will begin, God will begin to reveal himself to us even the more. I love it. It is a wonderful place to be with God. I've been telling God, and I know many of you have been saying it too, I'm sold out. Spirit, soul, and body, sold out, God. And I want to walk in this fullness of you and what you want. And in every area of my life, he's been more, I've been hearing him more clear, like not get up at this time. Don't let that come out your mouth. Yes, take those clothes back out the barrel. When I put them back in, where's it at? Instantly, my eyes saw the shoe. Everything. Every single detail. Every single detail. He is so entwined in every single detail in every moment of our day that we do not waste time on nothing else. And we live in this realm of peace. Because God came that we may have peace. And we live in this place of peace. Because we want to be quickened to hear and to move when God wants us to move. We will be able to move when he wants us to move. And we will not miss it. And we don't stay in this place of worry or anxiousness, but we're in this place of peace. In this place of joy with God. Amen. So I'm going to close there, beloveds. <clears throat> we'll start next week. We'll pick up from there. <laughs> Minister of that, I put in your hands. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Amen. Can you all hear me? Okay. I can hear you. Praise the Lord. Thank you for that message. Thank you, Lord God, of uh, walking in the light. And I think you hit it so much on the head. Walking in the light is overcoming those fears and being obedient to what God is telling you, regardless of what other people may feel. And giving us those examples, you know, where it was Paul that told Timothy, I've not given, God has not given you the spirit of fear, you know. So what a wonderful message of walking in that light. Praise the Lord. Amen. So um, we are, uh, you know, little by little winding down this topic. We have Minister Chris, they'll pick up and finish up next week. And then we have Minister Charlene, they'll give us a summary you know, about, you know, uh, the awakening to that new normal. Praise thank the you. Lord. We thank you for joining us um, in the New Life Church of Faith Sunday School. We welcome you to join us at the sanctuary. I think you've gotten a lot of invites from Minister Chris um, today, you know, that we truly need your presence um, because that's where we get to support each other, love each other, and 
you know, um, definitely learn from each other. Praise be to God. We are at um, 1419 North um, South Bowman Avenue in Danville. Um, and in the sanctuary, we just want to give everybody a reminder that we are practicing social distancing. So we'll ask that you wear a mask um, during the service. And we do still um, conduct pre-screenings. You know, we'll take your temperature and give you a little bit of hand sanitizer. Um, if you're not able to join us, we ask that you please stay tuned to Facebook our Facebook page, New Life Church of Faith's Facebook face page, and enjoy a live stream of our church service where you'll hear the remaining of our message from our very own Pastor Thomas Miller. We will begin promptly at 12 noon. Until then, we pray that the Lord Jesus will rest every, every word mm -hmm. that has been spoken and ministered to you so passionately today. Um, speaking of this urgency of us getting back with each other and fellowshipping and walking mm. in that light and learning from each other and leaning on each other, hallelujah, so that we can get the help that we all need Amen. to remain in that light, hallelujah. Amen. So we pray the Lord Jesus' blessings upon you, that he keeps you safe in his loving arms, and that he guides you each and every day. In Jesus' name, we thank you, brethren, and we will see you next week. God, God's willing. Amen. Goodbye. Amen.